Hi, it's Finn and Izzy and today we're going to show you how to make a simple, nutritious vegetable soup. But our first job is we're going to give our hands a quick wash. And then Izzy's going to quickly talk you through the ingredients that we're going to use today. So today we have four carrots, uh, one giant baked potato, one sweet potato, we have two slots, you can just use an onion. Uh, we have uh, some vegetable stock, thyme and uh, bay leaves. Bay leaves you don't have to add, we just like adding them, they're optional. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's enough to make um, soup for four people and if you don't have vegetable stock you can use chicken stock and as they said the bay leaves and the thyme are completely optional. They do add a lovely rich flavour but it's up to you. Now I'm going to get Izzy to carry on chopping the vegetables for me. I've got the potato, the sweet potato and most of the carrots done. We've got a board here, we've got a tea towel under it, a clean dry tea towel for stability and she can chop away there now while I talk you through the next step. So over here on a very low heat I have been heating the onions so I chop the onions first and then I put them in a big saucepan like that with um, kind of like a um, half a tablespoon of oil and half a tablespoon of butter and then on a low heat you just keep cooking them with the lid on check them every minute or so just to give them a little stir make sure they're not getting brown they're not sticking to the bottom and I'm going to return that back to the heat I might put it up a little bit now that because what I'm adding now is all our veggies so our carrots our four carrots our sweet potato and our potatoes and we're going to add these to the pot. Now I've done them and Izzy's done them in a fairly small neat dice. That's because that gives us the option of leaving it as a chunky soup and all the pieces are the same size or close to the same size and so they cook at roughly the same time. Um, but we also sometimes puree our soup and I'll talk you that, through that in a second. Now I'm going to quickly stir these and get them coated in all the nice butter and oil. Make sure every piece is covered. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give it a sprinkle of thyme. Now about half a teaspoon of thyme. And if you're using dried thyme, what you do is you put it into your palm like that and you get the palm of your other hand and you rub it like that. And then you rub it in. And that actually releases the lovely oil and flavour of the, the herb. You do that with any herb actually. And that brings out the flavour um, in your cooking. And then for a pot that size, one biggish bay leaf or two small. And I'm going to put the lid on that. And again, we're going to leave it to gently simmer for about four or five minutes, stirring every minute or so, just to make sure, again, they're not getting stuck to the bottom, they're not overcooking, they're not browning. Now is, Will you pass me the vegetable stock cube and will you grab a fork please for me? So now we're going to make up our stock. You can use powdered stock. We like these gel ones. Everybody has a preference. We just like these. And like I said earlier, if you don't have vegetable, you can use chicken. Now, I am going to add my hot water. Just dip that careful. And up to 500 mils, maybe a little bit. We might add a little bit of extra water if the soup is very thick. Will you stir that now for me, Is And make sure that the stock cube is completely dissolved. These are starting to soften and get nice and cooked here. And when the stock cube has dissolved, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna move it up to about a four, and we're going to add the stock and we're going to leave the vegetables and the stock to simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes at a nice medium heat with the lid on, stirring occasionally, checking that everything's okay. That looks good to me. So we're going to add this and we're going to simmer away, like I said, for 10 or 15 minutes. Now, we're going to pretend this is all cooked. Now the way you check that is if you were cooking this and you've done your 10-15 minutes and you want to make sure all your vegetables have actually cooked, you get your knife and you stick it in 
and if it goes in smooth and clean and there's no resistance that's the sign that all your veggies are cooked and if that was the case then what we would do is we'd get our fire mixer here and our blender and we just pop it in and squeeze it until it's nice and smooth if you don't have one of those mixers but you do fancy trying to make a nice smooth soup what you do is you get your potato masher and just mash 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 and keep swirling and you will eventually end up with a nice smooth soup but like I said it's also lovely chunky if you like at this stage you can also add a drop of milk or a drop of cream and finally we have a little cup here filled with some that we cooked earlier and when you finally blended it and we do add a little dash of milk I'll be honest with you because it makes it a nice creamy soup and that is your homemade vegetable soup cheats pizzas but our first job as always is we wash our hands we're going to be handling a lot of food today and using our hands to build the pizzas so important that we keep them nice and clean so when we talk about cheats pizzas we're not going to teach you how to make a fancy yeast or sourdough base we just use whatever we find mm -hmm. hanging around the house so do you want to talk through some of the things we can use it yes we have some old wraps here we have some nan breads and we have stale baguette that you might want to use yeah anything like that and actually that's why it was always a great one at weekends or in normal term time coming towards the the holidays because you always have wraps bread leftovers in the freezer and so it was a great way to use all those up so you're going to choose that as your base and you want to pop it on the plate there i'm going to choose baguette as my example then our next choice we can use our topping so our sauce so what have you got is we have barbecue sauce with about two spoons of tomato sauce we have just plain tomato sauce here you can use leftover tomato sauce or you can buy it in a jar from yeah. any supermarket that might have them yeah. and, and if you don't like the sauces you can use things like pesto if you want to go a bit Mexican, you can use salsa if you have some. Yeah, that's a lovely one actually. Yeah, there's always every fridge has a half-eaten jar of salsa somewhere in it, so it's a great way to use that up. And you can use mild, medium, whatever. So I'm going to do the pasta sauce on mine. You're, you love the barbecue, so you're going to pop a bit of the barbecue on yours. So you just smear it on like that, not too thick. And then our next layer is our cheese layer. So is do you want to talk us through the cheese layer? Yep. So we have the mozzarella and cheddar here in a bowl. Mm -hmm. And yeah. That's brilliant actually because we this was a revelation for us. This is a pre-grated bagged mozzarella. You can actually also get it with the cheddar already yeah. mixed in, but we've mixed our own and grated our own cheddar into that. Brilliant thing about this is it actually freezes really well. So we've thrown a bit out in our bowl for this and then we're going to pop that in the freezer. So the next time we make our pizzas, we just take the bag straight out of the freezer, sprinkle it over and pop it back in the freezer and it keeps really well like that. So it's a handy one to have. So we're both going to go use a bit of cheese on our pizzas, as much or as little as you like. I'm not a huge, I love cheese, but I don't like really loads and loads of it on my pizza. And then finally, our toppings. So do you want to tell us what we've got here, please? Yeah, so we have pineapple, we have uh, peppers, we have corn, we have salami, we have leftover chicken, and we have ham. Okay, so you are only limited by your imagination or what you have in the fridge at any one time. And like that, that's a bit of leftover chicken chopped up. Um, you know, uh, peppers, the salami, whatever you like. It's a great way to get the fruit and veg into the kids without them realising it and, and feeling like it's punishment. When the girls were younger, we used to make little smiley faces and different things on the pizza. So, you build yours with whatever you want. I'm going to go salami and peppers because the salami goes lovely and crispy and tasty in the oven. I'm going to throw some peppers on. Um, do you know what, I might throw some sweet corn on mine for a little bit of sweetness as well, just to kind of, because everything is a little bit spicy. So, what are you making on yours? I'm doing my barbecue pizzas with the 
with the chicken and uh, corn. Lovely. Okay. Now, once you've built your pizzas and you can take as much time as you like, you have a couple of different ways to cook them. You can, and I'm going to do it with my ones, you can pop it into a hot oven and cook them. They'll probably only take five, maximum ten minutes in a very hot oven because you really want them to be hot and crispy. It works really well like that. If you don't want to turn the oven on, you can pop them straight onto a grill pan and under a hot grill. So really hot oven, hot grill, but there is a third option in our house that we absolutely love and that's what we call the fried pizza. So what you do with that is you preheat a non-stick frying pan like this one, no oil, no anything, but you do, you do it to a medium heat. So this is at level three and it is, I'm actually going to borrow your little flatbread because the wraps are without question the best option for this because they're so thin. So what you do is you get your wrap and you slide it into your preheated dry frying pan and you get a second wrap and you sit it on top and you leave that for a couple of minutes. Now you have to keep a good eye on it because it does cook, um, it do, can go from cooked to burnt very very quickly. So you leave, but the thing about it is you leave it there and let everything melt together because actually the melted cheese is your glue that holds your sandwich together. So when you kind of, you just want to keep an eye on it every now and again, you just lift it up and have a look. That's nowhere near ready yet. You have to wait for it to be a little bit golden brown. And then what you do is when it's ready and you're feeling confident, you use your spatula and your hand and you literally just do a quick, I'm going to do it now even though it's not ready, a quick flip over. Whoa! You do lose, sometimes lose some stuff, but that will cook away now. And uh, we'll sneak the chicken back in. The escaped chicken. So we leave that for that for a few minutes. Meantime, we have one from the oven that we made before we started. This again was just a little flatbed pizza that we said we'd make to give you an idea of how it looks when it's all done and dusted. And I'll try and get as close to the camera as I can. That's just the old fashioned Hawaiian pizza, a little bit of ham, pineapple and sweet corn. It slides straight out onto the chopping board. and slice that up and it's absolutely gorgeous. Like we said, a great thing for older kids to make on their own, yeah. for snacks, for lunches, for dinners. It's brilliant and a great way to use up a lot of leftovers. So we hope you enjoy that. We hope you try it out sometime over the summer holidays. And once again, we'd like to thank you for watching. Bye bye.